Um, that's sort of the, the million dollar question. And if I had that answer, I would have written that paper too. Um, so, uh, I think uh, I'm certainly working on it. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I would, I would answer this with a couple of different examples. So in the social imaginary, in terms specifically of how, si how education is viewed by science fiction, it's extremely boring for the most part. It's the Jetsons, right? Jetsons and the robot teacher, Miss Brainmacher, right? We don't actually have, there aren't a lot of examples of educational futures in science fiction. No one has really written about that. Um, you get little snippets of it here and there. Um, so, and largely they're about, they, they, they have to do with technology. So I'll give you just a few. So have you, uh, the, the movie Ready Player One, right? Uh, but actually not the movie, the book, if you read the book, Ready Player One. Um, the main character goes to school through VR, right? And that's entirely in a neoliberal context right? Because it's about how many points you can earn and how much money he has. And he's living in the stacks in Ohio, you know, um, in Columbus, Ohio, I believe. And um, which is where most people can, can afford to live there. Um, so that's one example, right? So there's this element of technology that's sort of on steroids, right? Now I'm going to go to school through VR. We're probably not too far away from that. Another example is the matrix, you know, Cortical knowledge uploads. You literally plug your brain into a computer, right? I, I know Kung Fu. But even in the I know Kung Fu scene, in the simulation, Neo and Morpheus still have to fight. And there's still a space for a, an avatar, at least, of a human teacher in that dojo, right? And then Morpheus has that great line, I can only open, I can only show you the door you have to walk through. I mean, that's sort of the, that's everyone's philosophy of education, right? When they get down to it, right? Um, so there's this sort of idea of technology as not necessarily the answer, but certainly the avenue where we're gonna go. There's not a lot else out there. Um, I think some of, uh, there's some, uh, there's one short story that I, I read uh, from a book a couple of years ago by Kathleen Ann Goonan called Girl and Wave, Wave and Girl. Um, and it's about a girl who is post-human, this is a hundred years in the future, and human society has essentially genetically engineered learning disabilities out of people. And then she be, and then they begin to add enhancements. So now she has wings. She not only her, she's talking to her grandmother, who was one of the first people to get this surgery, this genetic, you know, you think about it with, this is all possible now with, you know, the, the Nobel Prize and and I believe it was physiology went to the, the, the scientists working on the CRISPR uh, mm -hmm. gene editing, right? So this is all, none of this is, none of, none of the reality is actually science fiction, right? So it, it may be possible in, in decades or so for us to genetically engineer special education and inclusive education out, right? It just may not be necessary. Um, but it's such an interesting story because it's all about the ethics of post-humanism and, you know, do we want to do genetic editing of humans and so on, all the conversations we're having now. But I don't know that there's actually an example out there of the, the idea of neoliberalism and education reform and, and education policy as it stands. So I think we have to write it. And I, I think that's what I'm hoping that I'm able to do and that I'm able to kind of get others to do, to maybe create a space. And I'll, I'll put up, a, 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 I'm, I'm working on a few projects that are actually looking at this. So I'm trying to actually look at these issues. Um, and uh, one of the projects is a special issue for policy futures in education, asking folks to imagine one of these scenarios, the probable, the possible, the preferable, and actually, you know, use, use it as an opportunity to be creative and write creatively, draw from science fiction. And what does this look like? What do these things look like? What is this, um, what, is it, what is the role of education in a, um, in, a, in a world of climate change when we've gone beyond all of the, the red lines in 2030 and 2040 and 2050? You know, people, I, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to think that 2050 is science fiction, but then I look at my students in my classes and they're going to be teaching in 2050, you know, if there's still a, such a thing as school. I don't know. 
you know, but if things continue as they are, they're going to be at, you know, middle end of their careers. This is not something that's going to happen outside of my lifetime. 